police researcher at Human Rights Watch and joins us now from New York. Adam, thank you very much for your time. Uh, what do you make of this uh, very latest reform about segregation? Of course, many people around the world will be thinking, sorry, hold on, you weren't allowing men and uh, women to sit together in a public place, but it's a big deal, is it not, for a conservative kingdom like Saudi Arabia to make this change? Well, look, Saudi Arabia has embarked on a number of uh, uh, reforms on women's rights issues in recent years. Some of them have been really important and some of them not so much. I would actually put this particular reform in the latter category. Um, it, the, the reform is not that men and women can, can sit together or not in restaurants. Uh, the reform is whether or not rest restaurants must have separate entrances for the family section or the men's section. Uh, I've, been Riyadh, I've been to Riyadh several times and I, I, it doesn't occur to me that restaurants were really following this all that closely to begin with. Uh, and I don't think this is a, this is a, a major change. And I, and I do still think that most Saudi restaurants will continue with the, uh, the men only and family uh, seating sections where men and, and, and women who are family members can sit together. So I, 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 this, this particular change is not uh, especially large. However, you know, some of the reforms that we saw earlier this year, including removing the travel regulations for Saudi women, those are major steps forward that are going to dramatically improve the lives of Saudi women and are things that the Saudi authorities should have done many, many years ago. Yeah, you're right about uh, the fact that many restaurants, particularly in Riyadh, don't necessarily enforce this rule about separate entrances. But surely around the rest of the country, it becomes more relevant. Riyadh is this modern city that's grown up and literally been built out of the desert. Not all of Saudi Arabia is reflected in the attitudes in Riyadh. But as we're talking about these slow, slow changes, literally allowing a woman to go to a football match, I mean, these things just mean that women become, over time, more accustomed to having increased rights than their uh, previous generations, correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And the reforms uh, that Saudi Arabia has undertaken, particularly in 2019, are major and will uh, dramatically uh, affect women for the positive moving forward and will begin to uh, dismantle piece by piece the oppressive male guardianship system under which they've suffered for many years. There are still a lot of problems. There's still a lot of discrimination in Saudi Arabia against women. Most notably, women still require a male guardian to approve them getting married. They still can't be released from prison uh, except to a male guardian. Uh, and male guardians can still go to Saudi courts to petition them to have women return forcibly to their homes uh, or to punish them for disobedience and things like that. So, so there are still a number of problems. However, the removal of the travel restrictions, the, in, the introduction of an anti-discrimination clause in employment, uh, and other changes that happened over the summer of 2019 are, are really seminal and are the most significant reforms for women uh, in recent years. Adam, what about women's rights activists who have been detained and what are the legal recourses that are available to them under Saudi law? So this is something that's really important. So Saudi Arabia, of course, has embarked on uh, social changes uh, and, and women's rights reforms. However, they've also been, sent a very clear message to Saudi society that you know the reforms are top down, they're granted by ben the, the benevolent authorities, and they are not things that people uh, can feel like they can push for or, or achieve through public activism. And that was the message sent when they detained women's rights activists beginning in May of 2019 uh, and held uh, without trial for nearly a year, during which some of the women alleged they were tortured. Uh, now, many of the women are free uh, and they remain on trial. Uh, but they but they are travel banned and they cannot speak freely. So, you know, while they may not be all of them in detention uh, at the moment, they certainly are not free to sort of live their lives and, and, and resume their human rights activities. Adam, really appreciate your contribution. Thank you so much indeed. Adam Kugel in New York.